Hello Windy Game fans, I've taken a look at Metroidvanias and more classic 2D and 3D precision platformers, so now it's time for action platformers with combat taking centre stage. So let's begin with Soul Quest, a self-described 2D hack and slash platformer which is apparent even from this short trailer. Set in the world of Celtic mythology, track down the goddess of death, take her power and retrieve the soul of your dead husband in this action pack title, having some gorgeous pixel art and fantastic action. Here's a smaller title that has been chugging along in development, in which Ghost Knight A Dark Tale is perhaps following in the footsteps of the many knights in indie game history, including one blue borrower, but also ghouls and ghosts, especially with how the character throws lances in this game. You are battling the undead, and battling your way through this nightmarish realm that is filled with all sorts of enemies, but they are certainly not going for the horror vibes, instead being more similar to Medieval in having more cartoonish enemies and looks good for a 2.5D title. I've been keeping an eye on this title since I think that the silhouetted look of Fist of the Forgotten is pretty neat, in which our protagonist wields a giant fist which is used to smash through enemies and obstacles but can also be used in the platforming to give you an extra boost like a double jump, also eventually being able to be used as a grappling hook. It does seem rather momentum focused, so you are, for the most part, running to the right, but it's not an auto runner and you do have to move back in the face of bosses. The developer is fairly active on Twitch, so if you're interested in watching game development, you can drop by his streams. A long in development title that is still chugging along is The Looter, with the developer having posted to Twitter as recently as December 2023, so that's a good sign, since this post-apocalyptic 2D action-adventure platformer does look pretty intriguing. It has an almost Last of Us kind of overrun world in which you play as The Looter, who has to venture out into the wilderness to retrieve resources, but find yourself on a mission that will bring you to the most dangerous parts of the world. It has a good pixel art look, and while this trailer seems to have sections which drop frames, I do think that the final product will be one to watch. If you love old school arcade style run and gun action, then you have to keep an eye on Gun Droid, one that is pretty much invoking Contra, which you can see in the weapons and even jump animation. Set in the year 20XX, humanity has made a bunch of robots who are now helping with everyday tasks, but when aliens invade, they found a way to turn the robots on us, so you have to use the gunner suit and its powers in order to defeat our enemies. It is pretty much a classically designed title, but there's some cool sections in which the character is riding on a missile, so for that throwback 80s fun, look out for this later this year. Here's another awesome throwback title in Abathor, a pixel art arcade action platformer that supports up to 4 player co-op and evokes the arcade titles of the 90s. I believe this has some beat'em up DNA as well, such as from those old D&D beat'em up titles, but it's a 2D platformer instead, without friendly fire, in which our party of heroes battles their way through a fantasy world. They are defending Atlantis against hordes of monsters sent by the gods, having some really amazing enemy and boss designs, aided of course by the pixel art. There are supposed to be more than 50 stages, which is a lot, looking like fun with friends, with there being a free demo subtitled Atlantis Landing, so do check that out if you're curious. 
I've covered Fallen Leaf many years ago and it is still in development, but as far as I know, it is still being worked on, so here's hoping 2024 will be the year. Of course, the throwback 8-bit pixel arts is a draw to me, with this having more than little in common with Mega Man, especially in the jump animation, but interestingly, has three distinct characters to play as, all of which have unique abilities. Also having more than four expensive world maps to explore and different paths that you can take. This next title was penciled in for 2023, so I did cover it last year, but that has since switched to TBA, in which the horrible SEO title of Sessions seems to be taking a while to get done. This comes to us from the developer of the dark sci-fi post-apocalyptic metroidvania Redo, which, as a side note, is also a terrible title for SEO purposes, but it's an underrated game with the hope being that Sessions will be a more refined version of the earlier title and it looks good, so I'll be keeping a lookout for updates this year. Another long in development title is Rot in a Porcelain Dream, one that I don't like to cover primarily because it doesn't have a proper trailer, instead having 6 to 20 seconds clips on their Steam page for some reason, but anyway, it's a grim dark 2.5D action platformer in which characters can tag team and switch between combat, looking like a good combat focused entry. I came across this title on Kickstarter and was attracted to it due to what else but the pixel art since Demon Claw Origins of Nara looks sick and most interestingly, is being made for the Mega Drive and the Neo Geo as well. You build the magical gauntlet Demon Claw, which has a variety of powers, using these to defeat enemies in what seems to be very classic looking action. They have nailed the visuals since it really looks like a Mega Drive or Sega Genesis title, with there being differences between the three versions, but if you get it on Steam, you'll be able to try all three. Developer Second Boss also specializes in throwback pixel art but of another kind, this time of the 8-bit rather than 16-bit variety, with Tucker's Abyss looking to follow in the footsteps of the classic Castlevania games down to how the character sprites are colored. You play as a demon hunter searching for the cure for her curse but can meet other characters and swap between them for the different levels, with each character having different abilities, so if you are interested, there's a demo on Steam as well. I came across Double Shake on Kickstarter way back in 2020, so 4 years on, it is gearing up for release, which, to be fair, is a fairly realistic timeline for making a game. This is a 2.5D platformer with a throwback log, similar to the 5th generation of consoles like the Saturn, PS1 or N64, with this game's inspiration, interestingly enough, being Tomba, Clonoa and Mischief Makers of all things which is perhaps a reflection of the developer's age and the games that they grew up with and does look kind of awesome. I'm not quite sure what's going on with Necro Fugitive since I've had this title on my watch list for many, many years now, but the developer is still active on Twitter with their latest post being in October 2023. And the cool thing is that they received a new trailer which we're looking at right now. You play as an evil shapeshifter on the run from justice, set during medieval times with enemies and weapons to match. I suspect there will be stealth elements since you can transform into an enemy to get past guards but when pressed, have the ability to change into a monstrous beast as well. The action and combat looks like the focus, although I am also interested in the structure of the game, whether it's open world or linear and level based, where hopefully this new look means that it's close to release. Sonic fans have had to rely on indie developers to give them their fix of gotta go fast action, with another promising title being At The Neon, one in which you play as this little green guy dashing through the levels in which there are things to collect and both enemies and bosses to battle. 
Combat here seems to be more of a focus, with the speed of the action being very fast indeed, and mix that in with omnidirectional dashing and the ability to freeze time and you certainly have a title of interest. War is coming. From the opening seconds of this trailer, I bet you weren't expecting what immediately followed it since Song of Iron 2 is the sequel to a game from 2021 which saw you playing as a medieval warrior making his way through a fantasy world, fighting orcs, trolls and dragons. Then this game straight up hits you with stormtrooper types shooting at our hero which is quite the contrast. It has the same amazing art style as its predecessor, so hopefully they will be able to deliver on the action. This next title looks awesome and has an interesting background since it comes to us from a developer out of Cuba, which is a rarity in game development, so I do wonder what they have to offer and the good news is that we don't have to wait long since this is a 2024 release. It's a hauntingly beautiful title set in an area known as the Smiling Islands in which our protagonist has to ascend as the saviour in what appears to be a cryptic and dark story. This has more puzzle platformer elements in addition to just street combat, also having some interesting enemy designs and gorgeous backgrounds, environments and cutscenes. I love indie games due to their variety, so if you do as well, this is one to watch. If Pizza Tower is anything to go by, people do have a craving for Wario Land type platformers, with the next promising game in this space being Anton Blast, in which you are fighting your way to the end of the level then hitting a button which causes the world to explode, then having to run back to the start of the level in order to complete it. The action and platforming looks intense, especially since it is set in hell and you're destroying parts of it in order to get back at Satan. It's weird as heck and kind of like Pizza Tower in some ways, with it having quite the cult following as well and should be fairly popular. This next title immediately captured the attention of many due to its aesthetic since Gurei is set in a world inspired by Japanese mythology and for the most part is monochrome but then comes the very intentional use of colours for bosses which gives it an awesome look. Curiously, this appears to be a boss rush title but in which you can choose to battle the bosses in any order, gaining their power when you defeat them but also powering up the remaining bosses when you do so you definitely have interesting choices to make. Acid Knife is on the list primarily because it's from developer Powerhoof who made the co-op competitive dungeon crawler Crawl with this having one of the most unique looks so I had to stop and stare. Interestingly, the premise is that you have to battle death centipedes in the melting psychedelic void so show me another game that is doing this with it certainly having vibes similar to devil daggers down to the weak point on enemies but as a 2D platformer instead and looks intense. Haha, -ha, I'm cheating a little here since I kind of forgot about Trophy Knight when covering Metroidvanias and to be fair, it self describes as a Metroidvania style action platformer instead of being a street Metroidvania so who knows where it lies on the spectrum. Of course, it's a beautiful pixel art title so I'm already in, looking to have fun combat as well with it having the unique mechanic of being able to get a trophy from the boss but then having to carry it back out of the dungeon which might lead to interesting level designs. Welcome to the world. The next game from the developer of Forgotten End is titled Forgotlings, one that spots their signature gorgeous hand-drawn animations that looks like a cartoon and adds in more combat and action.
It is set in the world of sentient objects which have become forgotten to time, hence Forgotlings, I think, with it being set in the same world as the first game and also has returning characters, along with plenty of variety in gameplay from platforming, stealth, combat and even an in-universe board game. I don't have too much to add about The Last Night, since this much-anticipated pixel art cyberpunk cinematic action platformer was revealed at one of those E3s many years ago and immediately got the attention of many, but controversy and delays followed so we have not gotten an update in a long time, but apparently it is still being worked on, with one of you in the comments saying that the developer mentioned that it will take at least 3 more years before it's done, so maybe we're looking at a 2026 release. Alright, I've really run out of words for Bushiden and I think many of you have as well since this long, long in development action platformer has been pushed from one year to the next where it did have a release window of 2023 which has since been changed to TBA so I've no idea when this is releasing. Still, it looks gorgeous with great art and impressive animations, especially during the screen clearing spells and special abilities, where if we don't get anything concrete in 2024, I will probably move this to the vaporware list. Here's an awesome looking action brawler in Breeze in the Clouds, in which you play as a corgi with the power to use weather in his combos, harnessing this to fight pollution and the enemies that are causing it. The character design, animations and combos look absolutely fantastic, so I'm certainly intrigued by this and want to know more about the game's structure. Along in development to the action brawler is Iron Cobble Kung Fu Janitor, one in which you play as the titular character who sweeps up trash and keeps the city clean, but can also use his Kung Fu to dispatch hostile robots, having an amazing art style and plenty of detail in the backgrounds which look awesome, so fingers crossed this releases soon. A fantastic looking action platformer that is basically Avatar The Last Airbender in all but name is Ember Bane, since our heroine reveals water, earth, fire and air in order to battle enemies in the world of the gods. The action looks smooth and fluid where you can seamlessly switch between the different elements to combo them together with certain abilities that can even be used in the platforming. This was initially slated for 2023 but it's now 2024 so I'm guessing that it's likely to be out this year. If you have been watching my recent videos, you already know the news that Slave Zero X has a confirmed release date in February 2024 and is one of my most anticipated titles, in which this biopunk action platformer set in a dystopian world looks action-packed and awesome. In doing more research, apparently the publisher of this purchased the Slave Zero IP with the original game releasing in 1999, so they decided to make a prequel, so oddity aside, it does look awesome and is said to be for fans of games like Devil May Cry, Strider and Guilty Gear. It's an ambitious title that has poured considerable resources into this, like getting voice actors for the game, along with an awesome look and character design, so we'll see how the game is when it releases. Here's another classic Vania title that I've been keeping an eye on in Lords of Exile, a game that has a similar 8-bit classic Castlevania look down to the very orange main character, which is excellently done and looks fantastic. It has been delayed a couple of times now, but I have a good feeling that 2024 will be the year, since it got picked up by a publisher and got a new trailer as well, this time adding the floating familiars which was not in earlier trailers, with the game also having two playable characters as well as speed running and boss rush modes once you beat the game, looking like a real throwback. I think that the title of this game is simply awesome since Iron Meat is memorable in the context of being a heavy metal run and gun action platformer about fighting against a ravenous mass only known as The Meat which consumes and twists everything in its path. Yes, 
that means if it gets into a truck or a train, it will mutate it into some sort of fleshy monster so I cannot wait to see the designs with the minute to minute run and gun action definitely having some contra DNA. Leave it to indie developers to bring us back to the good old days with this having a 2024 launch window so I hope to see it soon. Start the operation. If you are a 90s or older kid, I'm sure that the opening animation of those letters floating onto the screen would have immediately tipped you off to who the developers of Blackfinger Jet are, since of course, this is a very Metal Slug-like action platformer that has some of the original developers working on it. In fact, I don't know if it will attract any lawsuits since the freeing of a prisoner using a knife animation and the heavy machine gun H looks very similar to that of Metal Slug so hopefully they won't get dinged but as a huge Metal Slug fan, I'm all the way in on this. This next title just got a release date confirmation in which there's a long history with Berserk Boy who seems to have gotten screwed over by their initial publisher, even losing their Steam page in the process, but the developer managed to get back control and is self-publishing, so here's hoping Berserk Boy will pay off for them. It's a pixel art action platformer that seems to have quite a bit in common with Mega Man since our hero has different elemental forms and powers that he can use, fighting against a mad scientist and his army of darkness in order to save the world. They are supposed to be some sort of metroidvania elements, but the developer does also speak of multiple stages, so game structure is a curiosity, with there being a demo available, so check it out to get a feel of the action. A game that has slipped through the cracks in my coverage is Pepper Grinder, so I'm making it right by featuring it here since this is an awesome looking title with the drill as the main gimmick. You're using it to burrow through the earth, which kind of acts as the platforming in this game, and if any of you played Gunbound back in the day, this reminds me of the Spider Knuck machine with the underground projectile and with this being picked up by Devolver promises a certain level of quality. Surprise! Here's a newly revealed title that I had to show off since the Transylvania Adventure of Simon Quest looks like a classic Vania title, inspired by, what else than Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest, but it's so much more than that. Over spots a similar visual style and even combat, the developers are framing this as a parody slash tribute act that will subvert expectations since the premise is that our hero's rival, Stan Helsing, has killed Dracula first and robbed our protagonist of his glory, so he now has to resurrect Dracula piece by piece and then to kill Dracula himself. There are open world elements, mini games, sequence breaks and so much more, kind of looking like Infernax but is his own thing. This next title is from the developers of Celeste, the mega hit precision platformer, so it's no wonder that they are making another 2D platformer, only this time, of the self-described explore action variety but stops just short of calling it a metroidvania. That means combat and exploration, as well as secrets and mysteries to uncover, so I don't quite know where this should fit, but due to the pedigree alone, this is a title of interest and 2024 seems to be the year. As some of you have pointed out, the cyberpunk pixel art cinematic action platformer Replaced does resemble The Last Night mentioned earlier, but hey, since we don't know when that game is coming out, I could use another one of these which is why it's one of my most anticipated titles. You play as an AI unwillingly trapped in a human body 
having to survive in a corrupt world in the aftermath of a nuclear event and looks absolutely stunning with this team being affected by the Russia-Ukraine war, although I think that they have managed to relocate as of 2022, so here's wishing them all the best. If you prefer Metroid Venus instead, watch this video to discover 50 upcoming titles.